Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad you're here. I, uh, it says that it's muted. It's not muted? I'm making sure. Um, I'm not muted. Okay. Uh, welcome. This is an unusual time for me to go live, but I have found that the best time to go live is whatever works. And so here we are on a Tuesday afternoon. I apologize because we were supposed to go live yesterday, but there were tech issues. The past few days have been tech issues galore. So we are glad you came back today. So today I have a lot to share. I'm going to try to contain myself a bit, but um, I have a new card technique, like an interactive-y kind of card that I've never done before, uh, I don't think. It's like a variation of a few techniques all pulled together into one. And so I have that card to make, but then I also have two others. There's no way I'm going to do them all today. So I'm, I filmed the other two and I'm thinking that in the next few days I'll put uh, that video up too. It'll be variations of the same technique, but I'm hoping that between all of them you kind of get a, a feel of how to do this technique and hopefully use it with whatever supplies you have. So today we are using Pink Fresh. So I'm very excited because this weekend we had a Pink Fresh event where we it was a bunch of classes and I was the last class and Facebook reported my video during it saying that I was using copyright music and if you know me there's no music and you know if you know me well you know I'm not singing so it was a little stressful but we got through it so um, today we're just excited to play more with some pink fresh products and I have a guest with me today. She's going to craft a little bit, but I told her after a stressful weekend to take it easy and I would do the crafting and we would chat. So I have Heather Hoffman here. Mike, can you bring Heather in? Let's see her. She's, she's a pretty one. There she is. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I, this is a first for us to do this. So please give grace if we have any tech issues or, you know, if one of us tends to disappear. We're ready to be done with the tech gremlins. We're over there. Yes. So they can, We're tired they can of the done. tech gremlins. <laughs> so Heather, please tell, um, Heather and I have a lot in common. Uh, crafting, we both love the same type of music. And um, we, please tell everybody what your role is at Pink Fresh. All right. So I always, creative director is a name. It took us a while to even come up with a name because it's just yeah. kind of that little bit of all the every stuff that needs done that isn't covered under something else. So I, you guys, uh, some of you might see our Pink Fresh Lives. Leah and I take turns on those. Mm -hmm. um, I manage the design team. I do a lot of boring behind the scenes stuff, putting all the new products in the do. store. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I think everyone assumes it's all fun and games and a lot of it is. So I, yeah. there's no complaint. But there is definitely work involved that I have to do. <laughs> but, for sure. No, I for love, sure. I love working for Pink Fresh. And How long have you worked with them? I started full time in 2020 of all things. Oh, that was wow. like the bright spot in my April of 2020 when, you know, I suddenly had time and yeah. there was a spot. I kind of been doing part time before that and I was on the design right. team before that. So. Well, I always loved your card. So I'm glad you're here today. We thought for the first time having you here, we'll just keep it casual. So you'll do a little bit of demoing. I'm going to make a card and the next time we're gonna have you do some crafting. But you, yeah. after we watching <laughs> your weekend, I texted you and I'm like, you know what? Don't plan a card. I'll take care of it because you, you, you had a lot going on. So um, we also, um, I have in the YouTube description and it's also pinned in the chat. Uh, a link to everything that we're talking about today and everything we're using. Pink Fresh had a great new release yesterday. I was really excited to go live with it because I think it's one of their best releases. It's really good. Uh, and it's one of those that has a lot of collections that you can pick and choose what might appeal to you. And we thought we would show you different ways to use those pieces today. Also, they have a free gift offer and that is also in the description. And um, uh, Heather's going to demo foiling with that. Reminds me, uh, I better some... my hot foil later. Oh, it's true. Um, uh, somebody said Heather's volume is much lower than mine. Any chance you could bump her up or bump me down or something? Thank you. Not so crafty Mike's been working overtime lately. Um, anyway, <laughs> in the description below, we uh, have information on how you can get a uh, hot foil plate set um, for... 
for free with a purchase of $50, I think it is. Yep, and it's in the description. I don't think you have to do anything but spend $50. They will it's automatically put it, yeah, they will automatically put it in your order. It won't show up in checkout or anything. It just will magically appear in the box. Now, um, we are, good. she's going to demonstrate that foil plate and how cool it is. And I will also show you that um, you don't, you could use it without a hot foil plate too, so, or without a hot foil machine too. So um, we have, we can share that also. Um, now we're trying to get the sound balanced. Can That's you, as high as I can put her on. Can you turn me down? Mike's gonna turn me down. And then if you just, if you all at home hit your volume up, then you'll hear us both better, hopefully. And I'll make sure I keep my voice going towards where my microphone is too. That might help a little. <laughs> Talking into your shoulder. <laughs> Awesome. You know. Okay, so and we will also do some chatting like as we get going and I'm making a card, we are all we'll, we will also I have questions for Heather about Pink Fresh cuz uh, one of my favorite companies to work with. Just a very very comfortable company to work with. So, um your your glimmers warming up, right? Warming up, yes. <laughs> okay. So she is going to war while she's warming up her glimmer, I've got mine warmed up here. Let me show you the card I'm going to make. Now, we're going to first do some demoing, and then we'll get into this card. But while we have a second, I want to go ahead and show show um, the card. Let's see. Now, I've got to figure out my buttons here. There we go. Heather's in the corner. You can look at Heather. She's better looking than me anyways. Okay, I'm so going to just here is... for a second and grab my foil because I forgot to get that go... out. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. So this is the card that I do want to show today. It's going to show a bunch of different elements. On this card, I used Better Press to do this, but I'm also I think today I'll demo it with foiling with the Better Press uh, plate, which I'll explain all that as we're going if it sounds confusing. But the way this card works is when it comes out of the envelope, watch it spins. See that spins? It's a spinning easel card. So it stands on your desk like this, but it has that little kind of floating. So when if you're looking straight on, it's kind of floating in that window. I've done easel cards, I've done spinner cards, but I haven't done them together. And I haven't done an easel card where the whole center is open. So again, you just take it out of the envelope and it spins and you can stand it up. Then this opens up so you can have a place to write your personal message without it showing through. So several different techniques I want to show you on this. But then I also have two other cards with the same technique, but different products that I'll give you a peek on. But let me first, um, she's gonna, her glimmer's warming up. I wanted to show you this frame here that I used on this card. So as I mentioned, um, Pink Fresh has a lot of collections available. Now here's the thing, you don't have to buy all the things. In fact, no company really expects everybody to want all the pieces. It's whatever pieces you are most comfortable with using. So for example, in this, this little mini collection here, this is making things happen. There is a cling stamp. So for all of you who prefer stamping, there's this stamp. And then there are coordinating dies. And the nice thing about these dies is you can cut the outside only or cut it with the inside also. So you cut the whole border out or you could just cut out the center. So you have those options. Then there are layering stencils that allow you to quickly color this in. Um, so there are four stencils in it. And then there is a better press plate. So this is to be used with a better press system, which we will demonstrate. But you can also hot foil with this, which I'll show. And you can make an impression with an embossing mat, which I'll show. And if you have a die cut machine, chances are you have an embossing mat. So uh, uh, plates like this don't have to be just for better press. So, In fact, Jennifer and I were talking a little bit before um, because we've discovered at Pink Fresh how well the press plates work for hot foiling. We're actually, other than ones we already have kind of in the process manufactured, we're just going to move to better press because you get the best of both worlds and the dual purpose, actually triple purpose, I guess. Um, and they foil yeah. so beautifully that we don't need yep. to have six different products yes. to do the same thing. In fact, I find that press plates, and you said, I think you said you agree, press plates like this one actually seem mm -hmm. to foil even better than foil plates sometimes. I don't know if it's how I foil or 
the paper I'm using or what, but I find they it foils even better. I don't know. Who yeah. knows? But I'll take really it, quick, right? Really quick, I see a question from Judy yep. Jones about Pinterest bringing out um, storage envelopes. As far as I know, at this point, we have no plans to do that. Maybe she was talking about a different company, um, or I haven't heard anything about that, so. Well, you never know, right? You never know. <laughs> Pinkfresh does I have some fun her. things coming up. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so Pinkfresh does plan to do more of these press plates. So this is a, what they call better press pa plate. Um, they were made to go with the Spellbinders better press system, but I was going to demo here how to foil with one. And then um, Heather's also going to foil, but she's going to use the free gift foil plate. So again, you can use this Glimmer foil machine or a foil machine like it with and foil with either foil plates or press plates like I'm doing here. Tell me I cut that big enough. Knowing me, I didn't. <laughs> So what I'm when doing you're done, is creating is hot now, so we're ready. To go. Oh, good, good. So I have this just taped up here to create a hinge, and I put my foil behind it. That's close. I'll just move it a little bit. I put my foil, and you want to make it so that the pretty side of the foil touches the pretty side of the um, press plate or foil plate or whatever you're using here. So let me just move that up a little bit. There we go. So you can see the pretty side of this is facing the pretty side of the foil. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip this upside down and put it on this warmed up surface on the glimmer machine. So this machine gets warm, that gray, dark gray area gets hot, heats up the plate. I think you might foil a little differently than me. Do you foil different me, than me, Heather? I think I do because yes, I just do. heat up, the, yeah, I heat it up a Got little you. differently. You can do it either way, so you'll see how she does it. But there's a little timer button on here, and when it stops flashing, I can take it out and run it through my die cut machine. So if you have a different die cut machine, uh, it just depends on what foil machine works for you. This is the Spellbinders Glimmer, which is the machine that I use, and it works with the Spellbinders Platinum. And it also, I find that the Glimmer also works with the Gina K Intricut. So either works. I'm using, but that machine's out of stock, so I'm using the Spellbinders Platinum today. So the process I'm going through is what I would go through with a regular foil plate. But today I'm doing it with a better press plate. And I'll show you how to do it with better press in a moment too. Heather will demonstrate foiling with a foil plate here in a moment. Okay, so the timer is done over here. It stopped flashing. So I'm gonna take this out. Honestly, I usually let it go a few seconds longer, but we're just gonna hope for the best here. You know it's live, you never know what you're gonna get, right? All right. So you run it through your die cut machine, which gives it the pressure. Then you take off your plates, and then we'll remove this and peel it off. And look at that beautiful foil. Do you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Look at the so detail pretty. of that foil. Now, if you see, like right here, I see that there's a little extra foil in between the detailed lines. I just come in with a um, dry brush and just brush that away and that will brush away the extra. So I have another one here, and also, so you can see I've got, you can do this very easily. Look at this. You have the leftover foil too that you can use with the solid foil plate, which I will, um, I, which Heather's gonna show you in a moment. So you can see how you can get beautiful foiling results with a press plate. So I'm gonna do it as a press plate in a moment, but first I'm gonna let Heather demo a foil plate with yeah. the glimmer machine and how to use the leftover foil. She's going to be using the free plate that you get with $50 purchase. And also I want to answer a question from Brandon about sure. accidentally foiling the press plates and if that will affect its pressing ability. No, um, we actually um, had, we've been informed that at first that it would cause a problem. So I decided to test it and I could not, I mean, you could try it too, Jennifer, but I put the foil the wrong side down and I ran it through 20 times and I could not, it's like nonstick. I couldn't get the foil to stick to, um, to the plate at all. So nice. Well, good. Nice. Good to know. So here is part of that freebie set. There's the larger, big, there we go. That's almost a two size. There's also another little frame in there and I might just Generally, I would foil these separately, but I think to save time, I'm just going to run them through together because then you can kind of see what they both look like. 
Um, so the, and the I can still free that. foil plate set comes with both of those. Both of those, yep. So it's two pieces. One. You can use one or both or however you want. Um, and then I grabbed one of my very favorite foil colors, which is blush. It's just a beautiful ah. rosy gold. I got that one from Leah. She taught me that. Nice. <laughs> to love that Ooh, foil. that's pretty. Isn't it pretty? It's like there's rose gold. It's like a softer rose gold. I don't know how else to. It's pretty. Nice. So, yeah, the, just has a, a little toned down, I guess, from a rose gold. Yeah. Yep. It's like the softer, a little more pink. And I'm just going to kind of squish everything limited desk space, don't we know? Yep. That's the way it goes. All right. Making sure. Just waiting for that. I, I saw somebody up. ask, can you use a big shot with the glimmer? I think you can. I think so. I believe so. Every machine has a little bit different pressure. If you look on Spellbinders, mm -hmm. they give a good list of what machines are compatible. Um, and on general foiling, I feel like it works great. Some people, the solid foil plate, most people, it works good. Sometimes you might need to add some shims just because the pressure can be ever so slightly different. Okay. Gotcha. So the way I foil is I heat up my plates first like this. And then I pop my tray out because it shifts a little when you do that. And then I lay my foil down pretty side down, put my cardstock over the top, then add my plates, and then nice. grab the whole thing and run it through. I just, I like the hinge. I like the idea of the hinge, but for some reason, I'm just not good at it, and it always shifts on me, so. Well, it's good to, and this is faster. Like, you can let it warm up while you're getting everything ready, so. Yeah. Yep. Folks right. are saying, yes, you can use your big shot with uh, the glimmer. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Let's pull this off. Uh, look at, look how at that. Pretty that is. That is beautiful. Shine look at that. There. I like the detail. Fine line detail. Yep. And if you want, in a little bit, I can heat up my solid foil plate and I can run that solid version too if anyone yes. wants to see what that looks like in the. Yes. Solid so plate. she's going to use that, show how to use that leftover foil, but first you got to let your glimmer machine warm up. Yeah. So the solid foil uh, plate takes a little extra time. Yeah. So somebody asked, she just placed an order, but didn't see the plate in the, your cart. It will automatically magically show up in the box. And I checked, they still have them available. So don't worry. Uh, somebody else asked, Kath, uh, Catherine asked, is there anything you can do with this, fo these foil plates, these free foil plates that Heather just demonstrated with? Is there anything you can do with the fuse mink or laminator? They're not meant for that. However, let me show you what you can do if you get that foil plate free and you don't have a foiling machine. Let me just demo this real quick and then I'll get into my card. Maybe I'll do this while you do your heating up for the yes. using leftovers. So if you have, I've shown this in, um, in uh, lives before, but I think it's one of the things that is definitely worth showing again. So let's see here. Let me get ready. I wasn't prepped for this. So what I have here, you know, you know, this is how lives go, right? Still getting used to that. And what I find is it just means your desk is a bigger mess when you're done. So if you do not have a foil machine, but you get a foil plate like this free, like they're giving this away free with the order of $50. I don't think it's for sale either, is it? Nope. Nope. Okay. Only a freebie. So special. Okay. So... And it's a big one. So if you get this for free, but don't have a, a foil machine like the Glimmer, what you can do is use your embossing mat that comes with your die cut machine. So my Spellbinders die cut machine comes with this gray flexible embossing mat. And you just follow whatever sandwich they recommend for making an impression with a die. You can do this technique with either a foil plate like this one or with a better press plate. And I can demonstrate that next. So you're just, you're going to make an impression with this. Now it's going to look different, but it's a great way to use these. And one of my favorite things to do, and I'll show you a card where I actually incorporated this. So I have um, a piece of white cardstock here. This is pretty heavy weight. So these straight lines might be a little, let me get a lot, let me get, hold on just a sec. Sorry. All right, let's do this. Um, I saw a question someone asked about uh, the yep. name Pink Frick, how it came about. 
I yeah. cannot remember off the top of my head, but if you look back on the Pink Fresh channel um, from the craft hour with Jeff, we had one craft hour where Kinui came on and talked all about how the company started and a lot of those things. So that's a great spot nice. to go as a reference to get all of the inside information of kind of how Pink Fresh started. Jeff is a great host. I, I think I need he him is. on all my lives to make it go smoother. <laughs> okay, so what I've got here, person. he does, he does. Uh, Crafty Nikki, this is Heather Huffman. She is the creative director at Pink Fresh and one of my favorite crafters. So she's here today with me. Okay, so I have a piece of heavyweight white cardstock here, bigger than I need to be, but that's what I got. And I'm misting both sides with water just to get a better impression. You don't have to do that, but I like to. Now remember, this is that flexible embossing mat. Almost all machines come with it. If it doesn't come with it, you can buy it separately. And I put my kind of misted uh, uh, paper down, cardstock down. I'm putting my foil plate onto it and then the top plate. So I'm following the sandwich that is recommended for making an impression with a die. Now this is gonna make a bigger impression than a die would because remember the foil plates are a bit thicker, but it gives really cool results. So let me pull this out and look at that. You can make, it looks kind of like an embossing folder did it, right? So if you do not have uh, a foiling machine and you get this free from Pink Fresh Studio, you can just make an impression with it. And here is a, let me just show this real quick and then you can demo again. I did that on this frame, oops, on this frame here. So I, I did the impression like I just showed you on white cardstock. Then I applied uh, some ink over it to ink it pool, that pool color, it's uh, the waterfall, waterfall color from Pink Fresh. And then I rolled over that with a white pigment ink, uh, with a white pigment ink and a brayer, just to soften the top surface. So look at that deep impression that you get. So I did that with the foil plate, but no foil machine. So you can just use it as like an impression. All right? So this Perfect. is another card. This will be, it's kind of the same idea without the spin. And this I will have to put in that extra video. So if you get a foil plate and you're looking for things to do with it other than foiling, you can make an impression like that. And I'll have that in my video, that step in the video also. All right, so let's move to Heather. So now what Heather, you, you saw Heather do, she did um, foiling with the free plate. Let me switch her here. There you go. With the plate that you get free with $50 but she has her leftover foil. So she's gonna show you how to use that leftover foil. Okay, so this is the solid hot foil plate. Um, this is kind of my baby with Pink Fresh. It was one of those things on a random, um, I think a Facebook Live and someone said, I wish there was a way to use all the leftover foil and not waste it. And I had always been saying that to my kids, like I really wanna save it and use it. And they're like, mom, don't be a hoarder, throw it away. Just throw it away. <laughs> And all of a sudden it was like the light bulb came on. I was like, Kinnery, we have to talk. And, and right afterwards, and that was kind of where this came from. So. so Heather is the brilliant mind behind the solid plate that allows you to use the excess foil. Okay. All right, so, she, so that, that solid hot foil plate, Pink Fresh Cells, I have it in the supply list. So I always Watch. use a little cardstock shim in there, just a little extra pressure. And then it also helps to give it a little extra time to heat up. It's a big piece of metal. So we give it all the help. And then when I normally hot foil, I only go through the machine frontwards and stop. But with this, I always go back just because it's a little more time, a little more pressure, a little more. It's such a big plate. Yeah. Yes. Yep. For sure. All right. Let's see how it worked. And I always kind of start by just peeling a little gently. And if you feel like it didn't foil, which it foiled beautifully, you can run it through and reheat it again. Look but at that. Look, Look at that. At how I'm going to move this out of the way. So now you've got two versions with that one plate and that same foil without wasting it. Isn't that amazing? I love it. And it kept all that detail. Yes. yes. So Heather is the brilliant that. genius behind this. I completely <laughs> forgot that that was you who came up with it. I, I remember now. You know, I feel a little bit like some of the credit has to go to whoever on the live was like, I wish there was a way to use it. And it was like, that's just like, was the trigger that <laughs> teamwork, it's teamwork. So when yes. you saw, when you all saw me do the foiling with 
the press plate. Let me see here, let me switch. And I have this left over, I can do the same thing with that solid hot foil plate. So you can use that again too. I'm not gonna demo it to save time, but um, I do have that solid plate in the supply list if you wanna check it out. I thought I'd show you, I did this off screen too. I really like, so my favorite foil is the Aura. I love yes. this, or the silver version, which is the Prism. It just is kind of holographic. I used this and foiled on matte silver cardstock. And I just think that's such a fun look too. Nice. So if you've never foiled on a, you know, like a slick surface, like foil cardstock or like matte gold or silver cardstock, it really foils very, very easily. It's um, one of the easiest things to foil on. So, okay. All right, well, is it okay if I go ahead and work on that card while I bug yeah. you with some pink fresh questions? Sounds great, I just get... turned off my foil machine, so. Awesome, awesome. And next time I will have Heather, Heather um, craft also. Uh, I'm gonna, actually, I'll have her do some foiling since she's so good at it. Um, but again, she had a busy weekend, so I said, just let, let me, let me handle this. So what I did, this is the foiled image I did before with the better press plate. And I'm just gonna cut that out using the coordinating dies. Remember the dies for this set allow you to cut just the outside, just the inside, or both. And I'm gonna use both. I used, um, if you cut out the inside, it's really fun for shaker cards. I will say that. Ah, yes. You're gonna have to show yours here in a moment. So yeah. look at this. See how nice it cuts that out, all the detail? I love that. So again, those two dies are separate, so you can use them together or separate. I use them together. I got all that stuck to my plate now. Now, let me also show you. So I did the, this was I foiled with the press plate. Let me just briefly show you how to do this with the, pre, the better press system since some folks were asking about that. So let me get that all out. I already, I, my mess, it's unbelievable. Okay, let me get my better press system, which where did I put, oh, here it is. Goodness gracious, Jennifer. Okay, so I have, this is the better press system. It's this set of plates here, and you use it with your Spellbinders Platinum. It is compatible with some other machines. You just gotta go to their website to check it out. One thing that I've been doing lately is I have a thin piece of plastic that it was came from a sleeve that a stamp set or stencil came in and I put that down first so that I don't get ink on my better press system so that I don't have to waste my time cleaning afterwards I don't know because it's and it also you allows you it. yeah so and it also allows you to move it without touching it once it's inked up so this is a press plate this is the better press system I need to get some cardstock I'm going to use a big piece here you don't need to use this big, but this was left over from the thing I just showed you. And you just tape cardstock onto the other side. You can do a smaller piece, of course. Now this you can ink up with whatever ink. There are better press inks, but I found you can really use any inks you want. Here I have Atlantis ink. This is one of my uh, favorite like dark teal colors from Pink Fresh. That they have a little, they have families of four inks. Do you know, I know there's Waterfall, Paradise, and Atlantis. Do you know what the third one is? Or the Waterfall, fourth one? Uh, turquoise. Turquoise. Turquoise, okay. okay. I still ended up getting over here. If you have ink cubes, it's definitely better for this because you can get it where you need it. So I just ink that up kind of like I would a stamp. And this like goes on top with magnets and just kind of hovers over. And all you do is run this through and it presses the cardstock onto that plate, which will give you a little bit of an indentation, kind of like letterpress, but a little more subtle, but it'll give beautiful detailed ink transfer. So there, you, so look at that. Look how fine and detailed that is. Just gorgeous. Now I was messy with how I inked up, so, but I'm gonna die cut this out anyways. So you can see you can get beautiful. It's, I find of all the different systems that I use, I find better press to be the most foolproof of all of them. I don't know. I, I feel like it's I get so really great results. Just out of the box, easy. I loved it. So now this I can just wipe off instead of having to clean this. So you can do um, press plate. You can use the press plate, 
that I used, which I set somewhere oh, over here. You can use it to at, with the better press system, or you could use it for foiling, which I showed, I showed before. And I will show you how to make an impression with it in a moment too. All right, but let me get another one on this card. As you kind of get question? set up there, I saw several questions that rolled by talking about struggling to get good results with the smaller hot foil plate. Um, we do have on the Pink First channel a whole like troubleshooting video that we did with that. I will add, um, if you've done all of the things, heating it longer, adding more pressure, um, certain colors of foil can be a little trickier with the solid plate, I've noticed. Um, I think it just takes a while to transfer. The one final missing piece sometimes, um, and Leah experienced this, uh, her, she didn't realize that her hot foil machine was just kind of starting to wear out. You don't notice it on the little, little detail hot foil plates necessarily, but um, she was starting to not get good results and she replaced her machine and all of a sudden was back to great results. So I know no one really wants to hear that, but even machines are items that wear out. You know, you don't get a car and think it's going to yeah. last for forever. So she has a sad, lot of foiling though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that's just the one final piece. If you've tried everything else, it could be that. And then you just have to weigh and decide if it's worth it and you want to do that to check. For sure. For sure. I think I'm going to do peony. I think on my card, I'm going to do peony. So I have the first stencil. This is actually, I numbered them all wrong. So ignore those numbers, but it doesn't matter. With stencils like this, these are to color in the image. You can use absolutely um, whatever order you want. I'm using Peony for the first one. Now this is the foiled image. So you can actually uh, ink blend over a foiled image. So this will look a little bit different than the sample I showed you before, which has black outline but here I just thought I'd do the foiling over the foiling. So I have my waffle flower grip mat that's just holding everything down and I'm lining up each of the stencils. So I'll line up the next one again. Fly through the... that stencil. <laughs> what? Look at you fly through that stenciling. You're fast. Oh, you know, I know my lives <laughs> go way too long. So you, you got to do what you got to do. So, <laughs> I'm mixing some colors. If you have not tried Pink Fresh inks, they're happy colors. And, you know, I feel like every company has a little bit something different to offer with their ink lines. And Pink Fresh are the happy colors. This peony, mm, I just love it. Isn't now, mm -hmm. they the Pink Fresh inks are four inks, right? Light, medium, dark, extra dark kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. But instead of using one that's in the peony family, I'm switching to Raspberry Bliss to just put like a pop of pink, a little high contrast, because these are really little flowers. So these two colors really aren't meant to go together, but I think it's fun to kind of mix I love things mixing up. and matching color families. It gives you a lot yeah. more possibilities. Look at how pretty that is. Pretty. And I feel there's something about the happy colors that you have that I feel like you can use them together very easily, like mix color collections very easily. All right, key lime, which is I one of my most... Was yeah, <laughs> you knew I was going to have key lime. So here yeah. I'm doing key lime. What is your favorite of the colors? You know, for the longest time, Leah and I caught, kind of fought over coral reef as our favorite. Yes. I still love coral reef, but the pinks and the orange, like sunkissed, I'm I'm really yes. loving that color lately. It's made it on a lot of cards. Sunkissed, mimosa is kind of too. Yes, mimosa too. All I'll right. So she said she wasn't surprised I pulled out key lime because it's the green I always reach for. However, it needs reinking, so I just put a little extra muscle into that. So now I have green. And then for the last stencil, this is the detail of the leaves. Instead of doing another shade of green, like a darker green, I'm gonna come in with Paradise, which is uh, a little bit lighter than the Atlantis that I did before. And I really like the look of the um, blue with the green on leaves. It just gives you that I nice color. Paradise. You could also do yellow. Yeah. Doing Blue and this green is one of my favorites together. Yeah, for okay. leaves. I think I got that from, from you folks. Okay, look at that. Super easy, didn't take long. So on this one over here, the card sample that I did, I used the Better Press plate with black ink. And then I colored the leaves in the same way, 
but the flowers here I used apricot and peony. So my flowers are a little bit of a different color, just to change things up. Yeah, that, that blue just makes it pop. I don't know, not sure why, but it does. Okay, so let me just kind of clean this up here, these little pop out things. So pink, where's Pink Fresh located? Um, so <laughs> we're kind of a little bit all over the place. The warehouse. Yes, you are. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, the warehouse is in Houston. So we pretty much run off of central time. Uh, Leah lives in Minnesota. I live in Washington, although soon she's going to be in Montana within another year yes. or two. Yeah. I'm in Washington state and Henry, who's the owner, is in Dubai. So she's on a completely opposite time zone to, um, at least to me. I always just have to look at the time most of the year. If it's a.m. for me, it's p.m. for her. And sometimes I'm like, why are you still awake? <laughs> but the warehouse is in Dallas? Houston. Is that right? Houston. 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 Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. what I have here is I already off screen die cut uh, two of the frames just from white cardstock and glued those together. So it's stacked for dimension. I want this to be stronger. And so I'm gluing that on top. So this is actually three die cuts glued together. So we have a nice strong frame because remember this is going to stand up as an easel. All right. So let me get that done. So of all of the different uh, new products from this collection, which one's your favorite? Mm. Man, that's yeah. a hard. I think especially that stipple plaid background. It's just such a good basic. Ah, that goes with everything. I'm going to use that, that in a moment. Do you, look, yes. do you want to show a card with it? Sure. Let me switch I'm going to let this dry. Right so I've got this one that uses that I used it to hot foil. I think we're gonna dry emboss on that one or yep. better press. Yep. Yeah. Dry emboss. One of those. So that's and then this also uses the new um, cherry blossom set, which is kind it's, of our new um, You're you're still on um overhead. Oh hold or, on. Oh, I didn't click the done sorry. button, so let's there try that again. <laughs> <laughs> we're just seeing my face while I talked about what I was not you look at that there we go there it is hot foiled and then the cherry so, blossoms which that's a new concept we just released starting last month that was kinnery's another one of her brilliant ideas so that you have the textured um i think you can see on here those little textured die cut pieces yeah. but instead of having to get a million different colored card stocks there's that one piece stencil you can stencil all the colors die cut it all at once and you have everything just together Nice. And so that background, that's actually a better press plate, but you foiled with it mm -hmm. like, like I demonstrated earlier. That's yes. beautiful. And those, if you caught my, one of my last le uh, lives, I used um, die cuts and stencils. Like I, you do the stenciling first, then you die cut and it doesn't leave a trim. It, yeah. Those were from Pink Fresh. The ones she used here are just a new version of that. Gorgeous. Let me grab the dies real quick and then. Yeah, let's see those dies. All right. Oops. So, and the great thing is, is you actually have options. So if you want to still cut them from colored cardstock, you can just grab the dies and you can do that and cut them from colored. But then here are, this one just has a two piece stencil. So one piece does the branch. And then this piece, I don't know if you can see on here, there's little lines dividing and saying which color. It's all on one stencil. And I, I like to just mask with inexpensive post-it notes sure. and then I can block off which part I'm doing and do all the different colors and cut them out. So perfect. So and you can see the stencil, the openings are kind of big. That's so you yeah. can ink up the paper and then put the die on top and it cuts it out without the white trim. It, it's really there's also quite, we, quite smart. To make them easy to line up, there's these little, I don't know if you look on the stencil, there's a little triangle piece there yep. and one there. And there's holes through the coordinating die that you can line those up on. One of them is there and one of them's there. So when you're ready to die cut, you can just line those up and then you'll make sure you're cutting in the right spot. There we go. I have to get that in the it's, right angle. It's so so can... It gives beautiful results. And then you don't get that. Like if you try to die cut white cardstock and ink afterwards, it can little die cuts can be tricky to ink. 
This way you can ink over the stencils and do any kind of blending you want, then die cut. And it gives yeah. amazing results. Very smart. Okay, I'm gonna um, do the next step here. So let me see if I can switch. Okay, so what I have here is a top folding note card. And I'm just using the inside frame only here. So only the inside frame. I think that's what I did, yeah. And I'm centering it up on the front of the card and then I'll run this through my die cut machine. And this will create a window on the front. Normally I come up with my cards the day of the live. I came up with this yesterday because I thought we were going live last night. And now I'm like, do I remember what order I did, <laughs> did this in? Oh, yeah, That's the way it goes. Okay, so now I have this window cut in the front. Let me make sure I got this right. Yep. Let me pop some of these little extras out. So easel cards are, I think, fantastic when you have framed eyes like this. But Heather in a moment is going to show you how to, you can do a, uh, do a shaker card with this too. Okay, so now I have just that window cut in the front. And we just need to score halfway along the front of the card. So this is five and a half inches tall. So I'm going to score it two and three quarter inches. So I'll just put a score line right here and continue right across. So that I'm scoring right in half. The front will get scored in half. And I know it's a little weird that this frame is going to get scored in half. But there you have the front of the card. So if you don't have a fancy frame like this, you could always use a circle or oval. My video will show just that. So now this can go on the front. But first, I need to do the spinning, the spinning option. So let me get the spinning option together. I have, let's see. Now you use this on your, your set too, didn't yeah. you? Mm -hmm. It's a great set. How do you all come up, because this is called Happy Vibes. One of the things that I like most about Pink Fresh stamp sets is the unique sentiments. How do you come up with all these sentiments? You know, I, for them? the most part, like, Kitty will ask, like, Leah and I sometimes will work, request certain ones. Um, we're also really picky because sometimes she'll say, like, mm, we need to change that word or we need to change that, you know. We probably drive her nuts sometimes, but I always feel like it pays off in the end when they release and they're just full of good sentiments, so. Yeah, I just, I like that there are unique things because I feel like I use so many thank you, hello, you know, thinking of you. So it's fun to have something a bit different. Like I really yeah. like this one that says, I hope you are smiling today. Something that you can mm -hmm. use for a few different occasions. So I know, here, I get asked a lot for like birthday cards and, and sometimes I have them made them like, even if it doesn't say happy birthday on it, you can use anything for a birthday card. That's just kind of hope you're having this, a beautiful day. This is happy birthday. work for a birthday card. Mm -hmm. paper do you use in the oh, paper for the, somebody asked what paper do you use when you do better press? They sell a paper uh, that is ideal because it's a softer, it's like a cotton. And so you can get really, um, you get a bit a deeper impression, but what I used today was just uh, Mina Classic Crest, it's just a regular heavyweight cardstock. Oh dear, I need a cloth. I don't think I have any um, here. I know we're releasing it soon, but Pink Fresh is releasing watercolor paper and liquid watercolors. And oh. our watercolor paper works beautifully in the letterpress. We've used it and tested that a lot. So especially if you wanna yes. do watercolor techniques, then that's also a good option. So if you get the better press, I recommend getting, you know, a pack of the paper, but I don't think you always need to use it. Like if it's the highlight or like the focus of your card, then I can see wanting to use the nicer paper. But I ink, if you ink it up, I don't think you need to use the fancier paper. So all well, I have done I here, oh, sorry, go it, ahead. It doesn't get as much of an impression through the better press, but you still get like a stamped impression. So in a way, it's one more way to use the better press, almost like a stamped image as well. Yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. See, we're all about figuring out all the ways. So what I did here was white heat embossed on white cardstock, one of the sentiments from the Happy Vibes, on a die cut circle. And then I ink blended with the colors that I used here. So it kind of go with it. Just quick and easy. One of the other things I like about these Pink Fresh inks is they uh, kind of soften and blend as they dry. So it's a little more effortless to, to do uh, like an ink blending. 
All right, so we're gonna do that. If you missed earlier, this is like a little spinner easel card. So when you put it in the envelope, you wind it up. And then when the recipient opens it, it spins and it stands on display. So now I gotta do that spinning feature. Now there are a few ways to do this. I'm gonna show you what I think is the easiest and is just, is fine to do. You can do it fancier if you want to. It really doesn't matter. So I have some white string here. You can definitely do clear thread, but it's so hard to see in a video. I'm going with white. And I cut a string of it, and I just have scotch tape here. And I'm putting a piece of scotch tape right here at the back top center, right on the back. Nobody's gonna see that. Let me get another thin piece. I'm cutting uh, the scotch tape super thin so you don't really see it, because this is a tiny little spot. And then I'll stretch the other piece. Now another thing you could have done was to sandwich this string between the layers of die cuts that we created. But I just felt this was easy enough. And nobody's gonna see this back here. Now what I also like to do, you can see it stretched across, taped at the top and the bottom. I like to double up so it doesn't come undone. I pull it back over, so I fold it back over and I put another piece. And then I'll do the same thing at the bottom. Let me get another little thin piece here. That's a little bit big, I'll have to cut that down. Hang on. All right, so I'm gonna fold this down. Just by, I feel like by doubling that way, it's less likely to come undone. There we go. You don't need a whole lot. You could, another thing you could do here, if you're not live and waiting, when you know, have more time, you can just stretch the string across and tape it on, the, on your desk and then put two big globs of liquid adhesive and let it dry. And that will also hold it. But now I'll just trim off the excess here. And now we have our string stretched across. And then, let's see, I'm gonna do liquid adhesive, I think. I'll put liquid adhesive on back of one of the circles. Try to make that as straight as possible and put that right in that opening in the middle. You just wanna make sure it steers clear of anything on your frame. And then the other one. So I did the same message on both sides, but you definitely could do a different message. Maybe put a message on one side and then like a flower on the other but I just did the same on both sides and then give that a moment to dry. All right, so I'm gonna give that a moment to dry. Um, while this is drying, let's, Heather, do you mind showing the card that you made with this frame? Because it's And so I'll pretty. actually switch my camera. Hey, there you go. All right, <laughs> let's see. There we go. Look at this. Look at what she did. So much fun. And this, uh, Leah and I both did last Tuesday, we did this as a sneak peek live um, before, and we both created a shaker card with this that I no don't way. mind by just cutting the window out. Um, but Leah did a full panel, she cut both sides and did a full panel shaker. So um, you can check out that video if you wanna see her version as well. I think she also shared it um, on the Instagram hop today. So you for to yours, you just used the inside part of the die, right? Yep, and we filled it with a little bitty sequin. Oh, that's a great one. I just want to put shake. any sentiment on it. Oh yeah, yep. No, anything would fit on there. That would be a beautiful I shaker use... card. Make make several of them and leave the sentiment mm -hmm. off. And then when you need one, all you have to do is put it right, right at the center. Exactly. That's awesome. Did yep. you ink blend in the background? I did. You know what? It's hard to see it, but I actually used um, one of the new press plates to emboss, and then oh. I just added ink blending over the top to make it pop. You can see it more in person. It's really hard. Oh, I see it. Yep, I see it. You know, I, it's sad. I wish people could knew this, but some of the best details on a card don't show up in the camera. They never <laughs> Only in, no, in person. Never. That's yeah. the way it goes, right? Okay, let me go back to, um, to showing this here. So now we have our spinning frame and we need to add it to our easel card. So what I do is I just put adhesive below that fold line. Actually, yeah, wait, nope, 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 let me do it this way. I'm gonna flip this over and just put adhesive on the back of this, on the bottom part, because we only want it to adhere on the bottom of the easel. 
Yeah. So I'm going to put adhesive. I saw somebody ask how this doesn't slide up and down. I put enough adhesive on there that this glue will hold it in that position. So it won't slide up and down. You can also put some scotch tape in there if you're, if you aren't sure. So I, again, I only put adhesive on the bottom half and then I can line this up here onto the front of our easel card. Press that down. And oh. now we have the easel that frame that stands up with the spinning feature in the center. All right. That's and so we'll, cool. it's, I don't, I love easel cards and one of the, usually when you do an easel card, like it's solid through here. So by doing the frame that opens, I just like how it really has a full open window when it's on display. Well, the yes, and then it spins while it's on display, which. Yes. Oh, yep. That. It kind of, it, it really does move freely and it's fun when, if you wind it up. So when they take it out of the envelope. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is I, because this is a big open window, I want a, a um, nice protected spot here to write a personal message. So I'm going to put a mini card in here, but I wanted some fun texture on the mini card. Now you saw uh, Heather showed how she foiled with this plaid uh, better press plate. So again, this is a better press plate. Like I demonstrated before, you can use the better press system or you can foil, which Heather did on her card. I'm going to show making an impression with the press plate. So again, if you ever have a press plate or a foil plate, it, but don't have any fancy machine, you can definitely just use um, the embossing mat that comes with your die cut machine. So I have, I, this is the same thing I did at the beginning when I demoed making the impression with a foil plate. This time I'm using a better press plate. So I have my die cut machine set up with the flexible embossing mat. All machines come with one or it's available separately. Most come with it. So I'm just following the sandwich that the machine says to use for making an impression or embossing with a die. So I've got cardstock here. This is heavyweight cardstock, but you could use whatever you want. I do like to mist both sides a few times. I feel like it gives a little better impression. I'll lay that on the flexible mat. What's that one? Uh, this is called stippled plaid. I love it. It was beautiful foiled. I'll have Heather show hers again. Now I'm going to take this, put it down. There's nothing on it. You could put it, you could actually brayer ink on it if you wanted to, and it would put some ink into the, the impressions that this makes. But here we have, look at this. Look at that detail impression. Wow. Super deep. I yeah. love that. Gorgeous. And so you could use, you could lightly like, Draw, drag an ink pad over the raised areas. You could use a brayer, but I'm going to leave mine like that. Um, Jennifer, I saw two questions. I'm not seeing yep. all of them, but I just have to say two I can answer real quick. Someone asked okay. about stencils for the freebie plate. There's no plans for that. I don't even think that plate is going to be for sale. I think it's going to be only a freebie. Um, nice. And then what I filled my shaker with is actually the little three millimeter sequins from Pretty Pink Bosch. They're one of my very favorite shaker fillings. They're just super tiny and sparkly and they fit in and move really well. You, you know what, those are one of my favorites too because um, they, they aren't too, they have a little a teeny bit of dimension to them so they sparkle more, right? But they don't get mm -hmm. caught. Exactly. They don't get caught yeah. in. Pretty Pink yeah. Bosch has a lot of the great ones. All right. Yes. So. What I've done here is the Happy Vibes. Uh, I did the just because you're my friend, but I'm just using the my friend part. I'm actually just going to reach under here and cut this. This is going to go on the inside. This will be what is kind of a stopper for the easel card. And I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun just to use the my friend along with the sentiment we put on the front. For this, for this sentiment that's on the inside. I do recommend stacking a couple together. You could use foam tape if you want to, but I always am a fan of stacking together um, because it, it will give you a place for your easel to stand up against. See how it sits up against it? All right, so home stretch here. On the inside, we're gonna add a note card. This note card I cut to be slightly smaller. So this is, this card here is four by five and a quarter so that it just 
fits in there quite nicely. And then this piece that I did the impression on is the same size as that. It's a little wet still, but you know, speed crafting, right? Yeah, so when you're like, you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. Normally I would put something heavy on this just to make sure it adheres nicely. So that's a little mini card. This will get glued inside of our card like this. And then the last thing is our little stacked up die cut here. This could be a little flower. It doesn't have to be another sentiment. I like to put it kind of at the middle. Press that down. And this will be a nice spot for that to prop up against. Cute. So I'm gonna put something heavy on that. Now on my finished card, um, do you have any, uh, do any of your cards have your glitter uh, gems on them? I'm looking to see. I think I used color drops on the ones I have, so I didn't put them. The clear color drops are the ones I used on these two. Oh, okay. I, if you've never seen, Pink Fresh has, I'm going to make a mess here. These are glitter drops. And so they're little clear gems with glitter, colored glitter inside. I and love it's, it's such a fun sparkly way to add glitter without adding glitter, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, the, my favorite are the champagne ones. I bought a bunch of yeah. those. Um, on this one, I think I used the gold. So you can see there's some gold like glitter gold. drops. And I just scattered a few of them on there. So I've got to move my little drops here. But they come in lots the of different colors. Ones are super fun too. I'm oh yes. That going the pixie dust or something would probably be really pretty on that. Or twilight. Oh, oh yeah. I should get those out. So I wind it up before I put it in the envelope. And check out that texture on the inside. You're right, Sandra. It just adds so much in there. So it comes out of the envelope like this. They open it. It spins. It'll prop up nicely. And then you can open here to have your personal message written in there. So it stands super nice on display. It's kind of hard to see, but it kind of looks like that when it's sitting on a desk. So there's two different versions. So the this one I use the better press. I use the press plate on the better press to get the black outline. This one I use the press plate on a foil machine to get the foiled outline. I like the foil a lot, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know, foil that's, just, that's just me. So those are the two I had. Do you mind pulling up again the uh, card you did with this background so they can see the difference? So this is yeah. making an impression with that press plate. All right, let's switch to her. And there's hers where she foiled with it. So I think, I know a lot of people get kind of overwhelmed by the amount of products that companies have to offer. There's the stencils, there's the dyes, there's the better press, there's the foil. The, I think it's good to stop and remember that there's multiple ways to use different elements so you can pick and choose what you like. So what are those? There's a couple. These are just better pressed with, these two are with pink fresh ink and then this one was one of the Spellbinders ink. So there just you go. to kind of show it with just the, the better press look too, because I don't think we did that as well. Beautiful detail. And you could, you could do the better press and then scooch it off, set it down and do it in another color and you could get like a colorful oh. plaid. Ah, I didn't even think about that. I, I don't know, Clever. but I, I like Good that. Idea. I hope I hope there's more plates coming out like that. Now you yes. had another, while you're there, I think mm -hmm. you had, did you have another card? I did. I have this one with one of the other background plates, hot foiled, the dotted petals. Ah, uh, uh, I think, did I use that one? Yeah, I used that one on here. Let me, I'll show you. So yours is foiled with what, silver? Um, I think it's just gold, basic gold, gold. or brass. Okay. It might be brass. Oh, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Okay, yeah, we'll get to questions. Let me show you these real quick. So this one, you saw on her card, yeah. she foiled with that press plate. Here I used, uh, I just did the same thing I just did where I made the impression with the embossing mat. Does, it looks like it's quilted, doesn't it? Super easy. I don't, what's that plate called? I think I have it here. Dotted petals? Dotted petals, yep. There we go. Yep. So that's what I did on here. So this card, this one's one that I I can't 
I can't share today because it just takes too much time to show these. But this is another one where you wind it up. This is a bigger card, so it'll go in a five by seven envelope. But this uses my favorite product from the release. This image here, uh, let's see, I've got it here. It is this set. I was so excited to get this one. So this is the Garden Tapestry. And again, there's a press plate, there's dies, there's a stamp set, and there's coordinating stencils. So for my card, I did the press plate with the Atlantis ink on blue paper, or on a, like a pool color paper. And then I used the stencils to color it in. So I still use green and blue inks <coughs> to color it in even though I was on blue cardstock. You can see I have some of the little glitter drops there. And when you open this one up, it's, it will spin. Oh, I didn't wind it. It'll spin. I only put a sentiment on one side. So when it opens up, it spins. And again, it'll stand up on display like an easel. And I have the sentiment on the inside. Then this also opens for your personal message. So this is just another variation of the same technique using different products. And this will be in that video. I'm hoping I can get it done tomorrow or the next day. But it just shows you that there are different ways you can use the products together. So you can foil with this, make an impression with this, or use the better press with it. Did you get to use that one yet, Heather? I love it. Which one? The, the garden tapestry. Yeah. So I don't have a finish on a card, but I can show I have it stenciled yeah, out see. and better oh, press. Look at that. Just solid. So this is using warm buff ink. We call that faux gold. It's like heat embossing, but without oh. the texture, and it gives that pretty gold look to it. It's kind oh, of a nice. soft. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's not gold embossed on the right. Nope, it's that's not. That's the warm buff. It is. Let me pull that. It's this. This color oh. here. That's yeah. beautiful. Such a soft look to it. And then the other one is foil, did you say? It's better press. Oh, that's just, better press. Um, okay. it, I think it's using, I think I used Paradise Ink. Yeah. Yeah. As I well mean, as that was, this is the dotted petals done with better press also. Oh, uh, there you card. go. See, I find better press works great with a lot of different inks. I think. I know. That was a surprise. Yeah. I loved that. I, it does seem to work a bit better with their inks, but, I, you know, they're just starting to release more colors. So, um, yeah until they have more just you we can use yeah. what we have all right here's my last one now this is i showed this briefly somebody just asked this does is not a spinner card but it is an easel card that has that window so it's a full window there and it'll stand up on display this uses the new lantern sets now for this one if you were in the pink fresh event this weekend they did some really great things with it this is the lantern you can see i've been using it a lot so it's a bit of a mess here. This is the, what's it called? Do you know? Lantern Botanicals. Lantern Botanicals. There's this stamp. Now this one has a hot foil plate, but you saw today you can use that in many ways. Dyes and stencils. And I like it because it does this big floral. And I did that twice. I put one up here and one down here. And then this is where I made the impression with the hot foil plate that's free with... Uh, $50 order right now. I saw someone so, a ways back asking if you just freehand cut that frame. I'm guessing you used like a nested rectangle or something. No, I, yeah, I used a rectangle die for the yeah. inside. But if you don't have a rectangle die, what you can do, a way to cheat to cut a hole in the center is put a dot up here in this corner, dot here, dot here, dot here, and then draw an X between it and you can go in with your scissors and cut. It just you can kind of poke mm -hmm. a hole and go with your scissors. But really, the uh, a rectangle die is easy. For this one, I used some Spellbinders oval dies for that. So it's just different variations of that kind of easel easel card using the different different products. All right, now I know we missed questions. I'm so, sure we did. <laughs> um, anyway, Let's see here. Morning. All right. Uh, is it possible to impress and foil at the same time? Do you want to answer that one? I don't. I mean, when you foil, it does give a tiny bit of an impression, I've noticed, but it's not going to be the same as like better press and foil. However, I know 
It's a little bit of a reverse effect. I believe Leah has done where she better pressed with embossing ink and then heat embossed. So it's almost like an inset heat emboss a little bit with the texture. Oh, so that's kind of yeah, a fun yeah. option. As well. That's true. So yeah, you could, if you want the look of foiling with a better press, but you don't have a foil machine, you could do the better press with like a clear embossing ink, add gold embossing powder. It'll give you somewhat, somewhat of a yeah. similar look, not as much shine, but it would be cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Heather, a question for you. Do you ever open the warehouse for people to shop? I live in Houston and would love to shop live. No, I don't think that we really, it's more just, it's, really warehousey. Yeah. It's not set up for shopping, unfortunately. I think there is local people can pick up an order instead of paying shipping. Um, but I'm not quite sure on how that I would just email customer service if you're local. I'm wondering about that. I a lot of most places I know like Gina always says that she can't have people because you're zoned in certain ways and I'm sure that that's affected. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably part yeah. of it too. Um, Lori asked could you, could you ask Heather to discuss Pink Fresh latest move? You know, I don't know a whole lot. I just know it's a bigger warehouse with a little more space to spread out. Um, so we had a kind of a big clearance sale to make that easy. And it's uh, still supposed to be really close. I think it's just more space. Um, yeah. Good. More room, so, Good. yeah. Uh, let's see. The oval cutout, that is Spellbinder's oval dies I think essential oval dies I have it linked in the supply list and I'll have it in that video um, Kathy asked Heather do you know will the sold out better press plates be restocked yes absolutely I know there's sometimes a delay especially this time of year with the manufacturer they kind of have a break this time of year and so there's a little bit of a delay but they will be back yep uh, Sandy asked, would the better press plate with no ink give the same impression? The dry emboss is deeper. So do you want to explain that? Yeah, I was going to say what you did, you definitely get a deeper impression. But I have mm -hmm. just um, that shaker card I showed, I did just run it through the better press with the better press, the spell binders, cotton paper and no ink. And it d does give a softer embossed effect, kind of like better press, but without the ink color. So the way you dry embossed, you definitely get a much stronger impression, but either way and, does work. And both are, yeah, are lovely. And the fact that you yep. can do both is fantastic. It's kind of like with a stamp, you can either stamp it with colored ink or you can heat emboss with, you know, metallic. So it's yeah. nice to have the different options. Um, how do you decide how high on the card to put the stopper for an easel card? You know, you really can't go wrong with that. Um, I, I like the look of this in the middle. And by the way, I hid that behind this. So when it's closed, you don't see that. So that's part of the reason I put it there. But, you know, you could put it higher if you want it to stand higher or lower, if you want it to be at an angle. Really, you can't you can't go wrong. You can really position it wherever you want. But I, I was just gonna hold it up, see where I like it, and then stick it there. <laughs> there you go. That's a good idea. So she just sets this where she wants it to stand and then puts her little stopper wherever you yep. want. On this one, I just did a, I didn't have a die for that. So I just used a circle die for that. All right, Gina has a question for you, Heather. Will Pink Fresh have Easter products out next month? I'm trying to think, I, I don't know that there's anything specific. It's a lot of spring, which I feel like kind of fits both ways with Easter. Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to give any hints about what, I mean, <laughs> I can probably, I'll just ask permission later. Um, let's just say everyone really loves our washi tape releases. Ah, and yes. then I won't really commit to anything all the way there. So if, if you haven't <laughs> seen before, I've used it in videos, but um, Pink Fresh will have, I don't have any handy, but um, like a, a large roll washi tape with printed colored images, sometimes with foil. And you just peel it off, stick it on cardstock, use the die to cut it out, and you have these amazing, amazing little elements you can add to your card very quickly. And if you're like me and don't like to color, some, some of them look and, like watercolored. And then if you're going to invest in the dies, then there's always the stamp and then the layering stencils, so you can use yep. those same dies with both. So yep. it's not like you're buying a roll of washi and a die that's going to be useless whenever you use up the washi tape. Yeah. Because then you'll have the stamp and stencil to go with it. 
So it's definitely one of those things where there's different options and you can reach for whatever you know you have or whatever you like to do. Um, so somebody, Vicki said she never has luck using the negative foil, it comes out blotchy. Um, you gave some tips before, um, yes. but can you, you guys were the ones I think who discovered the best cardstock, what we think is the best cardstock for foiling. Do you want to talk about that? Hammer mill, um, hundred pound cover cardstock. That's our favorite. It's a very inexpensive and it also bonus works really great for ink blending. Um, yes. and then I'd seen someone else asked about the best. I really do feel like the fallback, the, the most foolproof hot foil is the aura that um, Jennifer yes. used earlier that she loves. That's if I'm ever wondering <laughs> if, if my foil's bad or what's wrong, I always fall back to that one. And I don't think I've ever had um, bad results. I know one time Leah had one roll that, and I think it was just old. It had been shoved back. So eventually uh, they might get old and she thought something was wrong and she just switched to another one and it was perfect. So that was a really yeah. odd thing. Um, but generally speaking, I feel like that's the foolproof one. It's weird. I found the same thing, the aura and then the, uh, the silver version, which is prism. I find yes. those are really f easier to foil yeah. with, but, yeah. um, Vicki, she had mentioned earlier, if you give it extra time and put in an extra shim, that helps too. But also, yeah. when in doubt, use that hammer mill. It's in the supply. I have it linked in the supply list. It it yeah. really foils nice. It's so slick. So slick. Well, and another option, especially for the solid foil, um, Spellbinder sells the specialty foiling paper. And it's even glossier. So if you're yeah. having, and especially you don't, generally you're not going to ink blend on the reverse foil or anything. So that glossy is fine. Um, so that might be a good one to test too, because I feel like it would be really hard to not have that work really well. So that might and be And you could option. save that for when you want to do the Just reverse foiling. You yeah. use the hammer mill from almost everything, don't you? Yeah. Pretty much everything, yeah. That's just my all-purpose everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I use the Nina for a lot. The Nina 110 pound is, is thicker, but... You're right. The hammer mill, the blending is just, yeah, super easy. So it's always hammer mill time. <laughs> Mike says, "Is it, is it hammer time? Is it hammer mill time? Stop." Hammer mill. Anyway, no. <laughs> um, somebody asked, "Can you hot foil and put it in the electric Gemini machine?" Um, I think there's a different foil machine that works with the Gemini. Do you know? Yes, about that? they have their the own hot foil. I think I'd heard it was being discontinued. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if they're going to discontinue and come out with a new version. I haven't heard any details about that. So, yeah. 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 Um, I don't, I, there's another, there's a, another machine out there that I think it's called the go press, go press, go press foil. Right. Yep. I think you can use that with other machines too, but I've just, the glimmer works with what I have. So that's what I've always used. Um, yeah. what paper for making an impression only when you make an impression with your better press plate, in your better press system, what cardstock do you use? I would use either the cotton spellbinders paper or watercolor paper, either one of those. Yeah. Although I just saw a video that Carissa Wiley did today where she used, she used it with ink too, but she wanted to do it on colored cardstock. So she put the colored cardstock and backed it with the cotton cardstock and ran it and through. So it. she got the yep. impression on the cotton. So that was a really clever little yeah, trick. Yeah, the cotton has a little give to it, which is, yeah. which gives it a little bit deeper impression. But if you did the technique where I used like the press plate with the embossing mat, you can use any cardstock for that. Any card I stock. use color yep. cardstock, whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we got, Oh, uh, Catherine asked, how did you three pink fresh ladies meet? I'm thinking she's meaning you. Okay. Yes. And Leah. Leah. And okay. I don't know how many people still remember Winnie and Walter stamps. Do you remember yes. Winnie and Walter? Uh, the owner of, we miss her so much. I really wish. So much. Still around. But Shay, the owner of Winnie and Walter was the sweetest person I have ever in my life oh, yeah. met. And my first creativation, I was on her design team and she took me under her wing and introduced me to her everybody i felt like she just kind of dragged me around because i i'm pretty shy and introverted and she was just like here we're gonna meet this person we're gonna meet this person yeah. and i met henry on that one and uh pink fresh kind of ended up being our hideout booth when we'd get tired and we just kind of hang out there and i think yeah. it was the second year i went um to creativation 
the whole Pink Fresh booth, their truck that was bringing it got in a wreck and she lost her whole booth. Oh, I and so she had that. to go buy a whole new booth and a bunch of us all chipped in, stayed really late that night, pulled together a booth for her. And I think the next year was kind of when a spot opened on the design team. And then Leah came back on, I, somewhere in there. I don't remember exactly what year Leah came back in. And so it was just kind of a slow meld over the years of, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I can. Good people. Give, yes. Give Shay the credit for that one. The, um, the booth is a happy booth. Like they're happy inks. It's a happy booth. Always, yes. uh, always very inviting. So do I'm you want to answer Kaylin real quick? It's like about the washi tape, um, that when it's discontinued, the dyes are wasted. If you don't buy the stamps, first of all, I'm going to say the washi tape we've counted out and I think oh. it's somewhere around 41 or 42 panels. You get so much on those. Um, yep. so you're really going to give those dyes a really good workout, even if you only bought one roll. And if it's one yeah. you really love, we don't discontinue in a big hurry. So there's usually plenty of time to grab those. Yep. Yep. Uh, there's a lot on the roll. I usually will pull it and put a piece of it on the back of the envelope too, to just kind of pull it all together. Um, cause yeah. there's a lot on the roll. Yeah. A lot on the roll. Yeah. So I am, it, we've already gone almost an hour and a half. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to mention? I don't think so. I mean, just letting everyone know that they can check out the blog hop and Instagram hop if they haven't. Yep. There's lots of giveaways up for grabs on those. Um, yep. And I think the Instagram hop was today and the blog hop was yesterday, but you yes. can still. Yep. They're open both. for a week. For, yep. For the giveaways and, and everything. Is a good place to go uh, the Pink Fresh site to get started on that? Yes. Yep. You can okay. go. On Instagram, you can start on the Pink Fresh um, Instagram page, and for the blog hop, you can start anybody on the design team. If you find they'll there'll be links that post, but the Pink Fresh is a great starting spot for both of those. And I will put a link to where's the best place for me to send people to see more of your work. Is it on the Pink Fresh site? Um, sure. I was gonna say I my blog, Instagram, everything name is all under okay. Houses Built of Cards. Yes. Um, but yeah, a lot of it, we've got lots of saved lives with Leah or me or the two of us together sometimes oh, good. Um, on the Pink Fresh YouTube. So. so I will add that to the description below also. Do you want to tell people about the the name of your site, House Built of Cards? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that name came back many years ago. I ended up just kind of on a whim setting up a blog and um I was trying to think of a name and I'd been creating cards for a while. Um, and I gave some of them away, but you know, they start piling up and it was kind of like, what am I going to do with all of these? Um, and I started taking them out to my church to put out and we'd had a ministry call with sister connection come to our church. And my girls were like four and five at the time. And for some yeah. reason it just sucked their hearts in. And every night when we get ready for bed, they would pray for the women and kids because, um, it's all in Burundi, which had been devastated by a civil war. Most of the men had been killed. So there were widows taking in orphans oh, yeah. and their own kids. And so they prayed for the moms and kids that didn't have a home. And at the time, this ministry would build houses for, I think it was $500 would build a house and house wow. a woman and however many kids. And I think it's up to 850 right now, which is still a bargain. And so yeah. all my cards that I don't use, I just put out for donation. And whether on my church or sometimes I post them online and then all that money goes towards building houses. So that's where the name came so from. So thus the site name House Built of Cards. That's yep. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I will add all that to the description. And in the description, I also have links to everything that we talked about today, but also how to get that um, $50 with an order of $50, you get the free hot foil plate set that Heather showed at the beginning. And in fact, you don't have to do anything. If you just shop nope. that link, they will automatically add it to your cart. You don't have to do anything. Actually, they'll add it to the box. It won't even show up yes. in your cart. It'll just magically be in your box when you when you get your products to your house. Super easy. I know easy. we have quite a few of them, so we shouldn't run out in any super big hurry. So. Yeah. She told me probably good for a week, so no problems at all. All right. Well, I appreciate you all watching. Heather, thank you for being here. But next time we're crafting together. Sounds good. I'll be ready. <laughs> I got I got a little carried away with 
all of this stuff. So I will have a video in the next day or two showing the rest of the cards. Uh, the other, th what, two cards that I um, just demoed or just showed you here today. So the, that video will show those the making of those two cards. Um, but I think that's it. I thank you all for watching. And Heather, I thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you for and having I have me. A, I have a new song that I will text you about after after we're done Sounds here. Sounds good. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all for being here. Again, everything's in the description. Be sure to come back um, in the next day or two, and I'll have the video with additional ideas. Uh, and I, I, that's it. Have a wonderful day, and I'll be back soon with that video. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you, Heather. Bye. Yep. Yeah,